Boris Johnson has been urged by the European Union to accept a massive U-turn with a brand new deal on Brexit arrangements for Northern Ireland, as the two sides edge closer to resolving the thorny issue. Brussels officials have put it to their UK counterparts 90% of border checks could be wiped out, but only if the UK agrees to align food standards with those of the bloc. Caution is being urged on the matter, with Ireland's Europe Minister Thomas Byrne warning the situation is delicate, but he admitted it would be excellent if such a deal could be agreed as it would solve problems in Northern Ireland and those facing exporters in Britain. However, any such agreement on food would seem unlikely because it would represent a monumental U-turn for the UK, which has stood firm on most of its red lines in negotiations and has strongly been against regulatory alignment to achieve a hard Brexit. It has been suggested if the UK is willing to adopt an agreement similar to that operating for Australia and New Zealand agri-food trade, then border checks could be significantly eased, solving a problem that has left tensions simmering over recent weeks. But industry insiders have warned this would still not address concerns from loyalists as it would still require a significant amount of paperwork. The dramatic new development comes with UK and EU officials currently involved in intense technical talks throughout this month over the future checks on food, plants and parcels going from Britain to Northern Ireland. Downing Street has said talks are constructive but there are still significant differences that need to be resolved. Sources on both sides have said that while progress is being made, there hasn't been a focus on removing checks on goods but instead looking at eliminating the series of rolling deadlines from the implementation of border controls. Last week, Northern Ireland Secretary Brandon Lewis told political parties in the country during a visit to Belfast that the contentious protocol would not be scrapped. The came despite demands from the DUP among others following seven successive nights of violence on the streets of Belfast. 7.45 a.m. Blog finished, for the latest updates click here. 6.30 a.m. Update, Brexit Britain, would gain £13. 5 b.n. From Joe Biden's tax reforms in boost to Boris plans, Brexit Britain could benefit from a mammoth £13. 5 billion a year following the introduction of Joe Biden's new tax reforms, under Mr. Biden's plans for a global minimum corporation tax rate, countries would also be given taxation rights over profits made by U.S. tech giants. Coupled with Mr. Biden's low-rate corporation tax, it is thought the U.K. could see up to a 21% rise in profit to the exchequer. According to analysis from Tax Justice UK, this could benefit the UK to the sum of approximately £13. £5 billion a year, or if scaled to 15%, £8.2 billion. 4.45 a.m. Update, Sadiq Khan's bid for London to opt out of Brexit unveiled before election. Sadiq Khan suggested London could have opted out of the Brexit process, remaining in the single market and customs union. In the build-up to the Brexit referendum, Mr. Khan was a vocal supporter of the Remain camp. Despite the Brexit vote, Mr. Khan has remained open about his support for the EU. In 2017, he called for London to be given special treatment after Brexit by being allowed to remain in the single market and customs union. 3.20 a.m. Update, Australia trade deal done next week, Aussie minister jets in to seal £18 billion pact with Truss. Australia's trade minister is understood to be jetting into the UK next week in a bid to finalise an £18 billion trade deal. It is hoped the in-person talks with Australia's trade minister, Dan Tehan, will help iron out the final details of the deal. Ms Truss has said a deal with Australia will allow the UK to ultimately forge deeper links with a nation that shares our values of democracy, free enterprise, and human rights. 2.10 a.m. Update, Angela Merkel's €650 billion Euros economy nightmare, Germany facing post-Brexit debt black hole. A German minister has admitted the UK leaving the EU has caused significant economic damage as Germany suffers from billions of euros worth of debt due to COVID-19. European Minister for Lower Saxony, Birgit Hane, said the economy had suffered greatly along with culture and education since the UK fully left the EU on December 31. 
Speaking to mark 100 days since the completion of Brexit, the Social Democratic Party politician claimed Brexit had also caused negative effects in other areas including students, academic exchanges and professional qualifications. The Minister of European Affairs for the North German Federal State claimed there was no provision for the recognition of professional qualifications making it uncertain for people who wish to work in Britain. 1 AM Update, Boris urged to stand firm and not cave to EU demands over Northern Ireland Brexit deal. The Prime Minister should not cave into the EU and accept a new trade deal for Northern Ireland, Express. Co.uk readers have declared, the EU wants the UK to accept a new deal where they want Britain to align with the bloc's food standards in order to reduce border checks on goods to Northern Ireland by 90%. However, in Tuesday's Express.co.uk poll only 4% of those who took part in the survey said that Mr. Johnson should accept a new EU deal for Northern Ireland. Counter to this a total of 95% of those polled said Mr. Johnson should refuse to accept a new EU deal on Northern Ireland. 12.05 AM Update, EU under pressure to be friendlier to UK in bid to end financial burdens. The EU is under pressure to be friendlier to the UK, former Brexit Met Belinda de Lucy has claimed. The Brexiteer explained the EU's economy needs a boost after the COVID pandemic. Speaking to talk radio, she said, there's going to be a lot of pressure on the EU to start being friendlier to the UK as its own economy starts to need that boost. We are not only exporting but we're also importing into the EU, that's increased. 10.35 p.m. Update, 20 EU countries refuse to guarantee extraditing suspected criminals to Brexit Britain. Britain may struggle to extradite foreign criminal suspects after 20 EU states refuse to guarantee their transfer if they are citizens of their country. 10 EU countries have declined point-blank to allow such extraditions, two will do so only if the suspected criminal agrees and eight have attached other restrictions, the Daily Telegraph reports. The development reflects the fact that Brexit means the UK is no longer part of the European arrest warrant. It also potentially undercuts the ability for Europeans who are suspected of committing crimes in the UK to be returned to face justice if they flee to the EU. A Home Office spokesman said, some EU member states have long held constitutional bars against the extradition of their own nationals to non-EU countries, which is why we negotiated a specific agreement which allows for offenders to face justice via another route, even where a country will not extradite their own national. It is the UK's long-standing policy not to distinguish between UK nationals and others in extradition proceedings in order to ensure individuals can be brought to justice. 9.45 p.m. Update, Brexit breakthrough as Swiss-style deal may address knee protocol disruption after UK U-turn. Brexit arrangements for Northern Ireland could be shaped around the deal Switzerland has with the EU, after it emerged the bloc had offered a new deal on the UK's post-Brussels trading. The EU and the UK are making progress towards a deal to ease post-Brexit trade checks in Northern Ireland. Brussels and Britain are locked in talks on how to improve the implementation of the Northern Ireland Protocol against a backdrop of numerous days of violence. The atmosphere surrounding the talks is now said to have warmed up a bit with discussions advancing on a technical level. The European Union has reportedly urged Prime Minister Boris Johnson to accept a massive U-turn with a brand new deal on the Brexit arrangements. Brussels officials told their UK counterparts 90% of border checks could be wiped out, but only if the UK agrees to align food standards with those of the bloc. Caution is being urged on the matter, with Ireland's Europe Minister Thomas Byrne warning the situation is delicate, but admitting it would be excellent if such a deal could be agreed. 9.08 p.m. Update, Nicola Sturgeon attacks damage Brexit has done to Scotland's fishing industry. Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has attacked the damage she claims that Brexit has done to the country's fishing industry. Ms Sturgeon pressed Scottish Tory leader Douglas Ross on the impact of Brexit on Scotland's fishing industry. She accused him of doing whatever the UK government says and not standing up for Scotland. 
Mr. Ross accepted, we haven't done enough for the fishing industry, we need to do far more. But he added, first ministers need to work with governments around the United Kingdom. We will deliver most for the people of Scotland for our recovery, if our two governments work together, not always looking to pick fights. 8.32 p.m. Update, Scottish Lib Dem leader claims Brexit proves why independence is a bad idea. Scottish Lib Dem leader Willie Rennie has faced pressure over his approach to rejoining the EU without independence. Mr. Rennie claimed Brexit was an example as to why breaking from the UK was not a good idea. He added, these were dangerous issues, they needed to be handled with care. That's why we want to make sure we don't repeat the mistakes with independence. The Scottish Lib Dem leader said the focus should be on convincing people of the merits of being in the EU. 8.10 p.m. Update, leaving EU behind. Brexit Britain on brink of historic post-lockdown growth surge. Brexit Britain is on the cusp of achieving historic post-lockdown economic growth, economists have predicted. While Brussels' botched handling of the pandemic has kept the Eurozone in crisis, the UK's recovery is within touching distance. As Boris Johnson continues to ease the UK's lockdown, there are several indicators pointing to this poised economic explosion, according to top accountancy firm Deloitte. In a survey it found that chief financial officers are more optimistic about the future than at any stage in the last 13 years. 7.18 p.m. Update, Brexit a factor in Northern Ireland rioting, Brandon Lewis, Brexit was a factor in the riots in Northern Ireland that left 88 police officers injured, the government has conceded. Brandon Lewis, the Northern Ireland Secretary, said that the causes of the unacceptable violence were complex and multifaceted. But he told MPs that among them was the Northern Ireland Protocol, which governs the province's post-Brexit trading relationship with Great Britain and the European Union, and which was signed off by Boris Johnson last year. He said, it can be easy to look for a simplistic explanation for the recent disorder, however it is clear that the factors behind it are in fact complex and multifaceted. 6.30 p.m. Update, Britain should slash trade taxes with developing countries after Brexit liberation, ex-minister. Britain should slash trade taxes with developing countries given its Brexit liberation from Europe, according to an advisor to Boris Johnson. The Prime Minister has established a task force to identify and develop proposals to drive innovation and competitiveness and reduce barriers to start-ups and scale-ups across the UK. Conservative former Minister George Freeman, one of three MPs appointed to form the task force, insisted Britain needs to be better connected to emerging markets, and embrace variable tariffs to strengthen ties with other countries. Speaking in the Commons at second reading, Mr. Freeman told MPs, if we're really going to become an innovation nation, home to these incredibly exciting technologies that will drive tomorrow's growth, then we also need to make sure we're better connected to those emerging markets around the world growing at 10% or 20%. As the Foresight report recently highlighted, global population growth means by 2050 we're going to have to double food production globally on the same land area with half as much water and energy. 5.45 p.m. Update, Northern Ireland's identity at risk by post-Brexit trading arrangements. Northern Ireland's identity is being put at risk by post-Brexit trading arrangements, ministers have been warned. DUP MP Ian Paisley, North Antrim, warned he fears a continuing downward spiral in Northern Ireland unless Westminster takes action to resolve problems which have emerged in recent months. Speaking during a statement on recent disorder in the region, Mr. Paisley told the Commons, it is a denial, sir, not to acknowledge the consequences of decisions taken by both front benches and imposed on Northern Ireland that have caused seismic societal, economic and community breakdowns, of course, that is the Northern Ireland Protocol, and we are witnessing the breakdown today. And all the condemnation in the world, and I condemn the violence, will not make that violence go away until actions are taken. The causes are not COVID-19. Seriously. The causes are not the Bobby Story funeral, that's the straw that broke the camel's back. 
The Secretary of State knows that the protocol lies at the heart of this because the identity of Ulster is at stake as a result of the protocol. 4.25 p.m. Update, EU Rebellion, Nations Move to Thwart BDL Power Grab as She Plots to Conceal Vaccine Farce. Brussels boss Ursula von der Leyen has been accused of weaponizing the Sofagate incident to cover up her failings in the EU vaccines rollout. A host of EU nations are increasingly furious with the European Commission president for attempting to exploit the row in order to rebuild her tarnished reputation. She had previously stepped back at the 11th hour after threatening to block vaccine exports to Brexit Britain in a furious rage of its Soraway success. Insiders now say the bloc's leaders are preparing a challenge against the top Eurocrats' latest bid to seize more powers away from member states. 3.40 p.m. Update, Lord Frost's Brexit prediction comes true as UK's trade with EU surges in February. Lord Frost's prediction UK trade with the EU would bounce back in February has proven true, after Remainers claimed the record slump in January was due to Brexit. Figures released today by the Office of National Statistics indicated that exports to the EU rose by £3.7 billion, 46.6%, in January. Trade with the bloc had plummeted by £5.7 billion at the start of the year. Remainers were quick to blame Brexit for the drop in January, the first month of the UK's new trading relationship. However, Lord Frost shrugged off the concerns at the time saying January has seen a unique combination of factors made it inevitable that we would see some unusual figures and predicted a sharp rise in February. He said, as well as changes to our trading relationship with the EU, we also saw evidence of stockpiling late last year, as the ONS notes. 3 p.m. Update, Oliver Pritchard Jones takes over live reporting from Paul Withers.1. 25 p.m. Update, Brexit poll, should Boris cave to EU and accept New Deal on Northern Ireland trade? Vote. Britain is being urged by the European Union to perform a massive U-turn with a brand new deal on Brexit arrangements for Northern Ireland, but should Boris Johnson cave to Brussels in order to resolve the thorny issue? 12.54 p.m. Update, UK has left the EU, get over it. Lord Haig proposes reset of relations with Brussels. Brexit is now over and the EU must appreciate the UK has left the bloc, Lord William Haig has declared. Acknowledging relations between the EU and UK are very poor, Lord Haig insisted Brussels must get over Britain's exit. Amid the issues seen in Northern Ireland, Lord Haig insisted the two sides have now reached a crisis point which may harm the peace process in Ireland. While the EU has issued the UK with several threats post-Brexit, Lord Haig praised Britain for its effective diplomacy over the last few months. Although the UK has finally left the bloc, four years after voting to do so, Lord Haig insisted one option to repair relations is for Brussels to understand that Britain has finally left. Writing for the Times, Lord Haig said, are we going to acknowledge on both sides that Britain has left the European Union, is not coming back, that everybody can now get over it, that we are each other's most important neighbours and it is entirely possible to create a better atmosphere for millions of people who will want to work, travel, invest and study abroad? 12.10 p.m. Update, Brexit's secret weapon, digital pound could revolutionise UK outside crumbling bloc. A digital pound can help the City of London consolidate its position as one of the world's key financial centres after Brexit, the chairman of the City United Project has said. However, Professor Daniel Hansen said it was vital to act now to enable the UK to compete with China as the 21st century develops. The think tank last week submitted proposals and recommendations to Taskforce on Innovation, Growth and Regulatory Reform TIGGR, chaired by Ian Duncan Smith MP, with the key one being a commitment to launching a digital currency. City United Project founder Professor Hansen, a former chief executive of London's Futures Exchange, has made a total of 24 recommendations for reforming financial services. 
He told Express.co.uk, We have a golden but one-off opportunity to capitalize in three world-beating assets, our fintech know-how, our global regulatory leadership, and our great, complex and diverse city. However we need to work together closely, but quickly, towards specific objectives including a digital pound sterling. China will become a formidable competitor and there's no stopping a digital renminbi with all its benefits and challenges. 11.07 AM Update, there's a lot of anger Nick Clegg U turns over EU for letting millions of people down. Former Liberal Democrat leader Sir Nick Clegg turned against Europe and its handling of the pandemic stating they have let themselves and millions of others down. He appeared on LBC to discuss the failures surrounding the European Union's vaccine rollout stating it was letting its citizens down by not putting out bets on different companies quick enough. Sir Nick, who was opposed to Brexit, also discussed a Bloomberg study which found growing support for UK independence after witnessing the pandemic issues in Europe. Sir Nick said it was understandable to see such anger as he critiqued the EU for its coronavirus failures. 10.10 a.m. Update, Frost to travel to Brussels for Brexit showdown with EU rival on significant differences. Brexit Minister Lord Frost is being dispatched to Brussels for showdown talks with his EU counterpart over the tensions in Northern Ireland. Boris Johnson's top Brexit advisor will meet with EU Commission Vice President Maro Sefcovic to discuss the ongoing issues with our divorce deals protocol to avoid a hard border. The pair have significant differences to overcome when they sit down on Thursday evening, according to government insiders. This will be their first face-to-face -face meeting since the outbreak of violent disruption in unionist areas of Northern Ireland. Loyalists are said to be furious that the Brexit deal's Northern Ireland protocol has created a border between the region and mainland Britain. A UK government spokeswoman said technical engagement with the EU in relation to the protocol had continued over recent days and we remain in regular contact at all levels. The discussions have been constructive but there are still significant differences that need to be resolved. 9 a.m. Update, French businesses issue trade alert as Brussels demands backfire, French businesses are starting to feel the impact of Brexit trade demands made by the European Union. Business chiefs warned the scale of the problems faced by European firms trading with Britain is only just starting to hit home. Jean-Marc Barkey, chief executive of manufacturer Sealock, said one of his trucks got stuck in the UK for seven weeks because of paperwork errors. We went from a system of pure fluidity to a really complex one, he told the FT, his company is heavily reliant on the import of a UK-made synthetic component to produce its industrial adhesive. The holdup was sparked because paperwork required to import it into the EU's single market from Britain was missing some important details. Mr. Barkey said, those kinds of delays are unthinkable for a mid-sized company like us. 8.10 AM Update, choice is to be made here in UK-EU relationship, says William Hague. William Hague has voiced concerns that relations between the UK and the European Union could be at a crossroads. The former leader of the Conservative Party raised the issue of tensions arising from mistrust between both sides. In a comment piece for The Times, Lord Haig, ex-MP for Richmond, Yorkshire, wrote there is a choice to be made here, on both sides of the channel. Are we going to muddle along, hoping to resolve each question as the deadline passes, taking our own measures when we deem it appropriate, seeking the advantage from every transaction and hoping no further global crisis hits us while we are busy mistrusting each other? Or are we going to acknowledge on both sides that Britain has left the European Union, is not coming back, that everybody can now get over it, that we are each other's most important neighbours and it is entirely possible to create a better atmosphere for millions of people who will want to work, travel, invest and study abroad? He said links between the two sides would not change overnight despite calls from the Irish Prime Minister to restart relations. 7.53 AM Update, Britain bouncing back. UK economy grows despite lockdown as EU states face new measures.
Britain's economy showed signs of improvement towards the end of the first quarter of the year, figures from the Office for National Statistics ONS, have shown. The economy showed signs of improvement thanks to the UK's successful vaccine rollout, according to the ONS. Following Brexit, exports to the EU have also begun to recover to levels seen before the UK's exit from the EU. After the UK was hit by a huge rise in cases in December, retailers saw an increase in figures towards the end of the quarter. Although figures have not recovered completely to pre-pandemic levels, the UK's vaccine rollout is expected to help the economy surge in the second quarter. The UK's GDP grew by 0.4% in February after a 2.2% decline in January. Experts had predicted a larger increase in GDP this month, but they also revised down the drop in January from 2.9% to 2.2. In terms of exports to the EU, goods rose by 47% in February while imports were up by 7%.